Hello there ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Cookie Cast. Today on Cookie Cast it's the darkest timeline. So um a trip to the cinema was on the cards. And what a joy that was. <clears throat> um migraines, games without internet, old podcasts, and uh TV, movies, and games, all contained in this, what is arguably quite long, podcast. Um, before we start, please consider like, share, subscribe, and comment. Leave a review where you can leave a review. Do all of that. Do all of that right now. Click the like button. Um, share the podcast with somebody. Um, subscribe. All of that. If you get so far through and you don't like it, then unlike it uh, and unsubscribe. How about that? Cut a deal. Yeah? Hmm? Anyway, let's get started. Here we go. This is Cookie Cast, The Darkest Timeline. What's up, party people? Trying different openings, trying different starts, trying different things. Trying not to be miserable. How y'all doing? You well? As as always, basically I have to presume that you're like, yeah, I'm good, thanks. You, you know, that kind of thing. Um... Yes. What have we got today? All sorts. I've put my thing over there and it should be here and that's no good. And I'm on the wrong page. So, let's go on the right page. Um, I need... Uh, you will have to... Excuse me, I'll have to drink frequently through this podcast because of a very strange situation. Um, my son decided, I've got a great idea. I'm going to eat some washing powder. It's really a long story involving a broken washing machine. Um, and I can't explain it, but since then, all I can taste is washing powder. Don't understand why. It is what it is. And it's horrible. So, there we go. Um, so, I went to the cinema. Now, that will become more relevant later. But, I'm going to talk about my trip to the cinema. Um, I thought it was a great idea. Um... To take five children. Now, immediately I know what you're thinking. But you've only got four children. Yes, and one of those children I'm absolutely not taking to the cinema anytime soon. Um, two of my daughters uh, had friends. They, they, we planned this trip. I told them they could bring a friend. We'd organise it all, narrowed it down. It was very, very complicated to organise and arrange and all of that. But finally managed to lock in on a film that everybody agreed to see. Big thumbs up. And managed to get it booked. It was a nightmare. But managed to get it sorted. So, I took... Five children to the cinema. I booked um, the best part of a row for the six of us. And we went in. And it was it was certainly busier than when I'd originally booked the tickets. But I was like, yeah, I'll be fine. We've got, you know, plenty of room. We don't need to worry about people sitting next to us. That sort of thing. We were on the end of a row, etc. As I sat down, 
I was like, oh no. So, I, as a parent, and as a child, I was I was brought up that the moment the lights go down in the cinema, you zip it and you do not open your mouth until the uh, the credits. Simple as that. No talking, no moving, no shuffling, no nothing. As a parent, I have passed that on to my children. Even my youngest of children know that the moment it goes dark, that's the end of any talking. It's as simple as that. However, I can't account for other people. I can't account for other parents. I can't account for other children. And as the lights went down, I went, I wonder if I should have had a conversation with everybody as a group. Just, you know, cover all the bases. Like, now I'm sure we're all aware that when we're in the cinema, there's no talking. There's no fidgeting. There's just enjoying the reason we're here, which is to watch the film. As the lights went down, the sheer volume of panic that washed over me, because all I could think was, one of these enigmas, one of these unpredictable containers of possible talking in the cinema could be just that i don't know what what their cinema experience is like i have no idea um as it was got through the film pretty much without incident pretty much without incident there was the odd word here or there, the odd movement here or there, bit of a shuffle, get yourself comfy, no real dramas, even when I'm handed out like popcorn and like little sweets and stuff, no major rustling, no major noise, no major anything. Now, this part, you're thinking, okay, why are you telling us this? Well, obviously, I'm going to get to that. Um, when I was younger, my mother used to have these, these, these wild <sighs> opinions about the cinema and how awful it was to go to the cinema and how everybody else at the cinema was, was terrible and so on and so forth. I cannot possibly imagine where I get half of my opinions from. Um, but everybody at the cinema was awful because all they ever did was kick the back of your seat, made a load of noise and all this. Um, this culminated in an altercation in the cinema. I don't... I don't think I was there. I think I was just informed of it. An altercation in the cinema where um, my mother had just got more and more heated as the film had gone on with the person behind and had then eventually lashed out at this person. There we go. And I believe at that time the then statement was I'm never going to the cinema to get... Uh, geez, I'm never going to the cinema again. As years went on and as time went on, I too suffered with the exact same problem. The, the mentality of the kicking the chair in front. Couldn't understand it, didn't understand how it worked, didn't understand it in the slightest. Just... Was it 
Was it simply bad luck? You just so happened to sit in front of the one person in the entire cinema who was going to spend the entire film kicking your chair and your chair alone. Years of this past, and I was like, maybe, maybe it's like a family curse. Maybe it's that. This went on for some time. And then the day came where I had also had the same sort of thing. I was like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. Then it was like, at a culmination of things, it was like, cinema was getting too expensive. Um, just, just a lot of things. And who wants to sit for two hours and get kicked in the back? Um, I steadily basically moved away from going to the cinema. It also coincided with the time where things were being released a lot sooner. Um, a variety of other methods for watching stuff. And basically that was the end of me going to the cinema. Jump forward a few more years and then we're back to, you know, when you've got kids of certain ages. Cinema's a, cinema's a good one. You know, it's like, hey, let's go to the cinema. It's an outing, it's an adventure, it's whatever. Um, my youngest daughter announcing to my other children and their friends, hey, when you go to this particular cinema, the cinema we were going to, you get to have ice cream. <laughs> no. No, you do not. Somebody, who will remain nameless, took you to the cinema and made the decision to allow you to have ice cream and I've paid the price ever since and by what I mean by that is not paying the price of ice cream because that's insanity so where does this get us to well as with a lot of things in life I have found a way to function I find a way to function in this world I find a way to function with the the variety of different types of people in the world I had a realization I was like I viewed it wrong all this time all these years I have viewed it wrong I viewed it wrong in the sense that I thought somebody was kicking me in the back it's not somebody is kicking me in the back it's a very simple thing when somebody takes a drink out of the drink holder on the same row that you're on, when they take it out, it shakes the row of chairs. Makes it feel like you're being kicked in the back. When they put it back in, they drop it into that plastic holder. Doom, it's like you've been kicked in the back. It goes all the way down because all the chairs are connected. And that, ladies and gentlemen was it there's not some malicious person that follows me around the cinemas of of the land saying there he is there's that guy that i've been paid by some evil cartel to sit behind in every single cinema screen in the world and just spend two hours kicking him in the back no 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 it's it's basically physics and that's the reason and thus i was able to return to the cinema there we go why is this relevant well at the point in time where i was awash with oh no i don't know how to contain these children that aren't mine and might be loose cannons going off left right and center talking in the middle of the film i don't know how to deal with that do I shush them? Do I do I give them the glare? They're not my children. I don't want to upset anyone. Oh no, this is going to be awful. The person behind me decided as the have the lights gone off. Yeah, uh, probably a perfect time to start a conversation. And I went, ah, there it is. Yeah, I'm not sure which of the things 
that was happening in the cinema annoyed me the most. Was it talking throughout the movie? Maybe, possibly, could have been. Okay, maybe maybe it was talking in two different languages. English, I think we can all agree, talking in English in the middle of a movie, not brilliant. Or was it one of my least, if not least, favourite language, which is French? So having to sit and listen to that throughout the movie was a absolute delight when... You know, it's like, hey, buddy, how about we shut the fuck up? Yeah, anyone want to, you know, go with that? Anybody? Any takers? Okay, was was it either of those things that was annoying for two hours? Mm. Or, or was it? So, going back to... Well, when you put your drink in the cup holder, it makes the whole row shake. Well, yeah, they removed that option by putting basically big, giant leather recliners in pretty much every cinema in the land. Um, Certain cinemas have, like, the big ones with the buttons and they can recline. Some have a, a slightly better seating shape, but they're not electric they're manual and you have to push them back with your head um what's also nice let's face it nobody wants to be kicked in the back for two hours so plenty of leg room gone are the days of being cramped into what i would call theater seats which i mean let's face it there's just literally no room between you and the row in front now now we've got plenty of leg room because you can recline so you still need the room the distance to walk past so much leg room some people would say that it is physically impossible unless you are nine feet tall to kick the seat in front of you physically impossible in certain cinemas don't want to draw attention to the fact of the cinema that we'd gone to the chairs are on different levels so a step difference so they're four foot away and lower down or higher up depending on your direction it is basically physically impossible to kick the seat in front of you When the film finished, I sat in the chair and made an attempt to try and get my foot to touch the seat in front from a seated position. Not moving, not leaning, not stretching, just from a seated position. And as a six foot two man, I could not reach the seat in front physically impossible to reach the seat in front at the point in time where i'd made the decision that i was going to stand up turn around and inform the obnoxious prick that sat behind me and kicked the chair for two hours in between talking at volume in French and English, and generally just being the single most obnoxious prick, at the point in time that I'd made the decision that I was going to stand up, turn round, look the prick straight dead in the eyes and say, as far as I'm concerned, somebody like you should be put in prison for the actions that you have conducted over the last two hours, Your parents should be truly ashamed of you. You should not be allowed to enter any cinema ever. The realisation of the five children I had with me, and I went, 
I guess I'll just leave that one, yeah. How? How? How is it even possible? I don't understand. There was a message at the start of the film. The message informed the five children that I was with and every other person in that cinema screen. Guess what? Once the film starts, don't check your phone. Don't be talking. Don't be making a load of noise. Puts everybody on the same page. Apart from the prick sitting behind me. Honestly. <sighs> um, recently... Um, I've been suffering with, um, with migraines, repeat migraines. And no, not just when I go to the cinema. Um, for the last couple of weeks, um, I've been suffering badly with migraines, um, some people will say that I don't help myself by the fact I hands down refuse to take any form of painkillers. Um, for a variety of different reasons. Um, but I just don't. I don't take painkillers. I can count on... <sighs> one hand, definitely... Um, but certainly two hands in the last five, ten years, the number of painkillers I've taken. Um, I took I took painkillers when I broke my arm. I took painkillers when I'd had a tooth removed. Um, all legitimate sort of reasons. Outside of that, if it hurts, tough. Um... Two of the occasions I uh, mentioned for taking painkillers have been in the last week because the migraines have got that bad. Um, it's been interesting. The last couple of weeks have been interesting. I've seen I've been seeing a lot of similarities with like particular times of year uh, because I was like I remember there was a time. Um, it was and I remember a particular point in time just before uh, just before my eldest was born. Where I'd had like a migraine every day for six weeks. Um, which I think is one of those. It was probably, you know, stress induced. Um, but yeah, just these. To to certain points, crippling migraines. Now, as I was saying. Um, as I was saying to Land the other day. I was saying. Um, a conversation about like sicky migraines came up. Uh, and I was saying I've never had one of the touch wood, touch wood. I've never had a sicky migraine, um, but I've known people who have been absolutely crippled uh, with migraines. Like, like can't get out of bed, have to be in a dark room, can't have any light, um, and with the with the being sick. Um, there was a day last week. Where I got I got to a point in the evening where I was like, "Oh, goody, my second migraine of the day." Um, it's it's a strange thing, isn't it? Because how quickly does the average person go from, "Oh man, I've got I've got a headache," "Oh man, I've got I've got a migraine," and whatever, to you know the next day is like, "Man, I've got another migraine." Uh, one of my favourites was going to bed. Uh, when a migraine was starting, be like, "Ha ha, I'm off to bed. I win," and the migraine being like, "I'll see you in the morning." And as when I opened my eyes, it was like, "Morning." I was like, "Oh shit." Um, how how quickly does the average person go from man? I've had a couple of migraines this week to I'm dying. This is it. This is it for me, guys. I'm just uh, it's been fun. I'm going to catch you guys around. 
Um, or is that just me? Um, some some computer game related stuff. While well, without talking about computer games, um, I've had a, I've had a situation recently which I've has brought upon an interesting question, an interesting ponderation. Don't think that's a word. Um, as I'm sure I've mentioned recently, I've been struggling with my internet. Um, part of me is like it's still not sorted and another part of me is like if I don't mention certain things maybe it'll be okay Um, but at this point in time and up to this point in time I've been struggling with internet issues something that's been interesting is computer games seem to know that there's no internet before anything else. Uh, A couple of games I've been playing recently have been doing this like particular thing that lets you know that the internet's gone before even the internet has worked out. So it's been interesting to be like, oh, um, the internet's about to go because my game's playing up. Okay, fair enough. We're on board. So then it's like, oh, um, this online game that I've been playing recently... It's like a free online game. Um, I can't get back on because it's an online game. So that was that. I was playing a game the other day, which admittedly has online elements. Like you can see other people in the world. But if you are not playing online, for example, it doesn't matter. So, um, it was a, a driving game, which I'll come on to talk about. And I'm driving along, and I was doing... In fact, no, I'm lying to you. I was flying. I was flying along, doing a, a flying, um, not obstacle course. Just just a course. Fly around, go through checkpoints. And I'm doing it, and I'm doing it, I'm doing it. Um, and then, I finished the, the race, the course, whatever... And then I was like, ooh, I think the internet's going to go. And indeed, the internet went. And I was like, ah, damn it. I've just finished that race and I was about to go on to do something else. And this then opened up this sort of interesting point in time where the game kicked me out. Like, oh, you've, you've lost a connection. And it kicked me out. And I was like, okay... That's interesting, because I understand the game has a a multiplayer element. I'm not playing multiplayer. I don't have PlayStation Plus. I'm still able to play the game, because I'm playing it single player. So, if you take away the multiplayer aspect, i.e. the thing that requires the internet, I and my game shouldn't be affected. But it was. A little bit later, the internet returned. I could log back into the game. And the game was like, oh, you know that um, that flying that you did before the internet went? And you'd done it and you were off to do something else. Yeah, um, I don't register that that's been done. So you're going to have to do that again. And I was like, but I'd done it. Surely the game should know that and register and have, have saved because you don't have to do manual saving anymore. But no. So I was like, uh, that's not ideal. So a couple of days later, I am uh, sitting down. I've played I've played one game. I'm like, right, it's time to play um, another game, which I'll talk about in a bit. And I put the disc in and I told it to load and it said, no, sir. Can't do that, sir. And I was like, interesting. I checked the internet and there was internet. And I was like, okay, well, we're in the realms again where this game has an online element. When you're wandering around this game, you can see other people every now and then. 
If you're in a town, there might be other players. I don't play multiplayer, and every time I load the game, it asks me, oh, do you want to get some PlayStation Plus? No, I'm good, thanks. Okay, you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay, crack up then. Play the game. Um, But for some reason, it wasn't able to connect to the server. Like, okay. So that was that. It wouldn't let me into the game. It wouldn't let me play the game. That was that. That was the end of that. And at this point, I was like... What is happening here? I've got a series of games which I'm being told, even though I'm playing them single player, I can't. Because without an internet connection, I can't play the game. Now, I understand if I'm playing, you know, DC Universe Online, the clue's in the name. It's online. If I don't have an internet connection, I'm probably not playing that game. And I accept that. It is a free-to-play, certainly is now anyway, a free-to-play online game. I am signing on the dotted line to say, sure, sign me up to play online. For the driving game that I want to drive around in my car and do my races and do whatever... And I don't want to interact with other humans because I have no need to. At this point in time, it's a single player game. And if you take away the internet and you take away the multiplayer aspect, my game, the game I am playing, is not affected in any way. So why can't I play the game? And this seems to be more and more and more and it's really starting to be a bit weird and obviously you don't notice it if you've got 100% fully working internet you don't notice it but let's say go back a few weeks when I completely lost internet for a couple of days so what I'm not playing PlayStation because all the games need a connection and I don't have a connection, so I don't get to play the game that I've paid the money for? What? What is that all about? Sign of the times, I guess. Saw a video yesterday, a day before or something, that was showing the difference between like the Xbox 360 era and the era we're in now, and how, you know, people had like, you know, Games night, you get the get the guys round, play some Halo. That was always the thing. Order a pizza, get a few beers, play some Halo. Everyone's got a controller, all of that. And nowadays, you sit in a room on your own with a headset on, checking what's happening on your phone. And it made me so incredibly sad. I was like, "Wow, we really are going backwards as a society." Um. Again, speaking of games, but not speaking about games, because we'll talk about the games in a bit. But um, I've been having a conversation with um, a friend of mine uh, who always says the same thing to me. Um, and has been saying it for years. Um, and in the last couple of weeks, I've, I've had the, the realisation that it's become true. Um, they're saying the true... True mark of an adult, and certainly a parent, that differs between that of an uh, adult slash parent and a child is, um, you have the money and, and um, ability to buy all the games you could possibly want. You just don't have the time to play them. And I've always laughed and joked at this in a in a kind of sense of, well, I mean, I don't know if you'd ever have all the money to buy all the games. Um, 
conversation around Christmas time of buying games and all, you know, they'll just go into the backlog and me saying, yes, but my backlog is designed to set me up for the next six months so I don't have to buy any games. Um, so a backlog to me isn't a bad thing, sort of thing. Um, but I had this realisation the other day. Um I re I recently finished quite a big, quite an in-depth um, VR game. I finished um, Asgard's Wrath 2, as we know. And I had this like, oh, well, actually, I've got this game to play and I've got this game to play and, oh, I really do need to go back to this game and, oh, I should probably put a bit of time into this game. And, you know, and this long list of VR games and typically, me being me, was like, maybe I'll start a new playthrough of Into the Radius. Um, honestly, I hold my hands up in my defence. It is it is very much a palate cleanser at this point in time. I just need a, a little bit of a rebalance. Playing Asgard's Wrath two, <sighs> yeah, it was a mixture of things. Some good, some not so good. So I just needed something that I could sort of recenter myself. Um, so there's a long list of VR games. Um, go back a couple of weeks. All I was doing was playing VR. I didn't, I hadn't turned the PlayStation on basically since Christmas. Um, and was kind of okay with that because I know a series of things. One being we're moving into the, the warm weather and... One thing you do not do is play VR in warm weather. It's just it's it's basically impossible past a certain temperature. Um, you will probably have some kind of heat stroke. Um, so I know that through the summer the PlayStation is going to get absolutely caned, and then moving into autumn and winter, back to VR time. So you know there's that. But it was the realization where I went. Oh, I've got too many PlayStation games. Now, I've not been able to say that in a long time. The console game market has been dire for a good long while, basically since the pandemic. Pandemic hit the games market like nothing else. And that's probably a bit of an exaggeration. But anyway... Um, and it's only really in the last year that the game market has recovered. Um, but it's kind of back with a bang, in a sense. And being back with a bang is very much in that kind of... There's a few games out and about, and if you pick and choose when and where to buy them, you can get some reasonable deals out of the situation. Um, I, <laughs> My favourite so far is I bought a game from a shop couple of weeks ago and got what is probably considered to be a reasonable bargain um at the not the weekend uh like thursday i think it was went to the exact same shop because i was looking for a specific item i found the exact same game in the exact same shop and they wanted £11 more for it. And I was like, I mean, talk about getting in, getting in on a deal. Um, I bought... No, no, let me go back. I got a game from Christmas, Diablo. Um, and like I say, not really been playing. So I'm, I've been playing Diablo. Uh, we will come on to talk about the Crew Motorfest. Uh, which I may have mentioned last week, and we'll talk about the trial, and ultimately the fact that I bought the game off the back of the trial. Um, there is also um, another game. And then the straw that broke the camel's back was I had a game turn up. Um, a long, long story about how I'd ordered a game thinking it was going to turn up the next day, and it didn't. And then I thought it was going to turn up the day after, and when I double-checked the date... It was basically like, no, it's not coming for at least a week. It was like 10 days for my Amazon Prime order. I'm like, WTF. Um, 
pretty sure I went through that at some point anyway. Um, that game arrived. And at that point in time, I went, oh no. It's finally happened. I have reached that point where I have too many games and not enough time. Because there's no time. The other thing, the other realization was, um, as far as like films and TV are concerned, um, I've still got a film that I've had since Christmas that I still haven't watched. We're going into the second week of April at this point in time. And as far as TV shows are concerned, there is so much stuff to watch. If I went through the list of stuff that I've, I've that I've started, partially started, half started, whatever, it'd probably take me 10 minutes to go through just the list of stuff that I've got on my list of to watch or I'm watching or whatever. And I reached a point where I went, this was last night, I turned around and I was like, do you know what? I don't want to watch any of it because it's officially reached that point now where it's too much stuff. It's it's over it's overstimulating. It's crossed a threshold of oh I'm excited to watch this and I'm excited to watch that. Oh I'm really looking forward to this episode of this or this film or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's gone to the level of it's it's too much. And as I keep saying, I keep talking to like people and saying about like having this limited time these days. And I feel like I'm having my time stolen from me. I will come on to that when I talk about um, computer games, I think. And I had this thing where I, I, I played a game and was like, I feel like you've robbed me because I could have been playing another game. Um... Something interesting that has turned up in the last week. Um, trying to narrow down a particular time of year. Um, I was trying to work out when the dog needed his vaccinations. Um, and in doing that, uh, Leanne was like, well, w- when was this? When did this happen? Because when was that? And we were trying to work out a date for something that had previously happened like a year ago, but it was like, well, was it here? Was it there? Was it this month? Was it that month? And Mm -hmm. trying to narrow it down. And then it's like, well, okay, you've got a series of ways of finding out. You can look at, you know, text message from a particular point in time. You can do a search in your text message, uh, check an email. Um, But I knew that I had um, two ways to find a piece of information that I needed. One was, I generally keep my podcast notes. I know for some people, it might be a surprise that I actually, you know, plan podcasts. It might come as a shock that I, you know, keep notes. Um, And the other thing was um, bank statements. If you're trying to find money you paid out at a particular point in time, check your bank statement. Um, So I did both. Um, I went back a year in my podcast notes and I went back a year in my bank statement. Simple. I set a time scale for my bank statement of three months a year ago. So like a month before, the month of, and the month after. I did the same for my podcast notes. I went back and was like, it's somewhere around like February, March, April. So let's look in, in that area. So I started reading through podcast notes from a year ago, round about this time a year ago. And I started looking through my bank statement. And the interesting thing that I found was a lot of the stuff I was talking about a year ago at this time is some of the stuff that I've been dealing with recently. I found a note, a podcast note that was like, you know, need to talk about this. And I was like, oh my word, that is exactly what I'm going through right now. To the point that I nearly wrote it down as a topic to discuss. I was like, that'll be that would have been really embarrassing if somebody comes along and is like, you know you talked about this last year? 
yeah. And I'd have been like, I have absolutely no idea. So it was interesting to look through podcast notes and be like, wow. It's like, you know, like a mirror sort of thing. What was weird, <laughs> super weird, some might say, was to look at my bank statement this time last year and be like, oh my word, it looks exactly the same as this time, as this current time. I was like, what is happening? What is going on here? This has got to be some kind of weird prank. I had gone to the same place, to the same establishment, on almost the ex- the exact same day. A year apart. And I was like, Wow. Like, hang on a minute. It was Easter time. So there was like something to do for Easter for the kids sort of thing. And, oh, you know, we did it last year. So let's do it this year. That kind of thing. That's that's fine. That's understandable. You can kind of get that. If it was good last year, why not do it again this year? Simple. You've got the fact that like um, my my youngest daughter is a little bit older. My son definitely they're like a you know when they're that age a year makes a massive difference um so yeah why not why not do it like you know let's let's do it again that makes sense what makes less sense is the fact that everything around it was also exactly the same <laughs> i was like oh wow i've become that person that I'm that predictable that a year later in time, I'm in the same place, doing the same things with the same people. And there's something that's quite comforting about that, you know. Not everybody can say that, for better or worse. But <laughs> there's also something that's a little sad. <sighs> little little ditty to finish on. Um, it's been the holiday times. Holiday times have just ended. Back to work today. Um, so I think I, I think I ended up having ten days off, which was an absolute cork. Um, largely to do with the bank holidays. I only needed um. Four days off, that's all I needed. But with two bank holidays, two weekends, turns it into this big block of time. My last working day was last Thursday, into a bank holiday Friday, into a weekend, bank holiday Monday, and then holiday for four days and another weekend. Because about Friday, just gone. And I was like, what is this feeling that I'm feeling? It was a foreign feeling. So I, I don't really understand what's going on. Like, certain things were easier. Maybe it was just that, maybe, you know, getting, getting up out of bed a little bit easier. Um, parenting parenting for want of a better way of putting it parenting is often a little bit of a grind you know you do the same things every day especially in like term times and things like that you know you know where your child's going to be at what time on what day and what they need to be doing on what time one day and what activities after school activities um, you know what days like for me, I have a day off during the week and what that day is going to look like. So everything's kind of, going back to the last thing I was talking about, very much the same. Um, you can get a little bit 
bogged down. People talk about, you know, if you've been in a, if you're on week five of a six week term, how things can feel a little bit like wading through treacle. Um, so it's like, well, why is, why, why does things, why do things feel a little bit easier? Why is parenting that little bit easier? Why is it a little bit more fun? Some could say, you know, having a bit of a laugh and a joke, you know, winding up this child or that child or, um, you know, extra, you know, extra sort of like extra time to sort of, you know, pass compliments or, um, like, oh, you know, that's a nice outfit that you're wearing today. Oh, that hairstyle is very nice. Oh, did you do did you do your hair yourself? And oh, look at you, and you know, all that sort of stuff. The things that just you just don't have the time for. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Why is it the way it is? Why is it what is this feeling? And then it dawned on me, and I went, ah, you son of a bitch. It was happiness, obviously. Obviously it was happiness. Because, ultimately, it was that point where I'd moved that far away from working, the grind, the day in day out of parenting the and you know i'm not i'm not saying that it's a bad thing i'm not saying it's awful all the time i'm not saying it you know oh it's so it's not about that it's just right you got to get over you got to get this child dressed you got to get this child fed you got to get the the school bag's got to be in the right place at the right time oh we need the push chair oh you got to get out the door and by the time you've got out the door you know oh we're going to be late no, we're not going to be late because we're, you know, we're always on time and we're always early. And you get there and it's like, right, okay, now I've done that. Now we've got to go and do something else. And oh, I've got to, I've got to start work. And yeah, you know, oh, I need to walk the dog and oh, I need to fit a run in. And and it's just bang, 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 bang all day, every day. And it feels like you've been punched in the face. You know, like if a baby punched you in the face. Fair enough, if a baby punches you in the face, probably not going to feel it too much. Probably not going to bat too much of an eyelid. If a baby punched you in the face a thousand times in that day, around about 99, you know, 999 times, you're going to be like, this is probably starting to fuck me off. So, it was that. It was that moving away from that. It was the peak. It was the the tip of the bell curve. Um, I don't know, like for parents out there, if you know, you've got, I've got about twelve different apps that relate to either school or nursery. Some of them, they're just dead apps. You know, the nursery decided they were going to use this app for fourteen seconds. So you have to download it and put a password in and put a code in and, oh, the code doesn't work and you've got to get it reset. You've got to go through all of this stuff because in eight minutes they're going to decide to go with a different app. So you've got 12 apps for school and nursery and they all, they all want to be in touch. They all want to connect. They all want to send notifications and all of that ultimately to tell you stuff. Um... My personal favourite is the is the school app because the school app says, "Are you enjoying your holiday? Are you enjoying spending time with your children? Are you enjoying the fact that you don't have to get up for work? Are you having a nice time?" Good, because I'm here to ruin that. That is pretty much how the school app works, and it makes me insanely angry. And I curse it, and I'm like, why don't you go away? And yes, I know I can turn the notifications off. Um, 
the realization that what I was feeling was happiness. What I was feeling was, this is nice. This is how it should be. This is pretty close to bliss. And I think we can all agree the thing that comes after that is, ah, well, it was nice while it lasted. Because ultimately, even on the Friday or the Saturday, you are mere hours away from saddling back up on that horse and riding off into the sunset of abject misery. I make it sound worse than it is, but... Yeah. Sometimes, something that's nice can be not so nice at the same time, is what I'm saying there. Um, I have some TV, a movie, and some computer games. No VR this week, and I'll explain why. I don't play VR when all of the children are in the house in case of an emergency. I don't like to have my uh, senses reduced in a situation where I might need to, you know, deal with the fact that there is a child on fire because they randomly burst into flames whilst lying in bed. Um, So I don't play VR when all the children are here. And for that reason, there is no VR this week, although I did play a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of Into the Radius last night. Not a huge amount to talk about there, so I'll just skip that for now. Um, I watched uh, two episodes of two different TV shows. One is new. One is uh, second part of a new of second part of a series. So that bit is new. I watched episode five of season two of Invincible. Um, I finally gritted my teeth and forced myself to sit through the adverts. At the start of the episode, whilst cursing every single moment of it. Um, I nearly didn't get through it, if I'm honest. Uh, it was it was tough going, but I, I, I did manage it. Came out the other side, watched episode 5, series 2 of Invincible. Um, it was good. Something that... I like a TV show or a movie that's not afraid to kill the main character or a main character. Like a, what would you call it? Like a B? No. You've got the main character and then you've got like like a sub character, but like a main sub character. I, I like a TV show because TV shows do it more than movies, but I like a TV show that's prepared to kill off. A relatively main character. Um, no spoilers, um, but spoilers. Um, episode five of series two of Invincible was like, yeah, we're probably done with these characters, so let's get rid of them. Um, which was a bit of a shock. Um, but I kind of liked it. I was a bit like, yeah, good on you. Good. I like your balls kind of situation um there's a there's a couple of things about this series that i'm a bit like uh, what what are we what are we doing here what is this um but work on the principle that you know as these things unfold that's how stories develop so sort of thing um it's been good. I've enjoyed it. Um, the best part of an hour animated episode can be a bit of a tough pill to swallow. I know I keep saying, like, you know, if if something is an hour, I, I, these days I shy away from it because what I don't want is to have to pause it in the middle. I don't have to stop watching an episode, which is why half hour episodes, you know, it's the sweet spot, isn't it? Um, speaking of half hour episodes, uh, this is quite a long explanation, which I'll try and condense down. Um, 
So I'll tell you what I do. I watched the first episode of the first series of Mr. In Between. Mr. In Between is an Australian TV series um, about a. I think the description is described as a gangster, which, you know, uh, called Ray. Um, he's got a daughter, which clearly um, adores um, separated sort of um, family. He's got uh, what appears, what seems to be like a disabled brother. Um, and the first episode is obviously meeting like a, what you presume is a new love interest. Um, this TV series became known to me a few years ago. Uh, from a, a a forum that I was on um, that put a clip of this TV series on um, and people were asking what it was and I'd looked it up and I'd seen it and trying to see if I could get it in this country with it being Australian um, and there was one it was one of those I was like you can but it's not easy um, sort of thing um, it seems to be you know one of those sort of reasonably violent um so it was like yeah fancy watching this it looks good sort of thing um weirdly a couple of weeks ago it popped up on disney plus of all places and i was like how strange but i'm absolutely gonna give it a watch watch the first episode <sighs> I don't know how to say this without offending anybody. Um, as a as a British person, watching something that's Australian is often a bit odd because, as as a British person, you're used to watching stuff that's either British or American, and Australia. <laughs> Australian stuff is kind of smack in the middle. But because of that, you don't really know what you're getting. I think one of the other things that strikes me is... Uh, I don't know. is I feel like the woman in it... I feel like I recognise it. In fact... I feel like if I look her up, it's going to be one of those things where I'm like... Of course! Um, oh no, let's go here... Um, okay, here we go. Yeah, go in here. And uh, okay, I can't get into it from there. Can I get into it from here? What you just went to like the cast. I mean, there's no. My picture? Really? How do I know if it's the right person? Oh no, that's the child. So that's not it. Okay, that wasn't... Oh man. Uh, oh, hang on, here we go. Yes, right. So... Well, well there you go. Of course... She was in Neighbours. <laughs> Hilarious. Uh, she was in Thor, Love and Thunder. Um, I don't think that's what stands out to me, but <sighs> nothing else in that list does either. So let's say it was Thor and just be done with it. Um, watch the first episode. First episode was good. A um, couple of funny sort of bits in it um like say half an hour hitting that sweet spot so definitely something that i plan on going back to but like i said honestly the abundance of stuff at the moment it makes it difficult to commit to something i think i've had this with like games where i'm like well i should be playing this game but shouldn't i be playing this but what about this am i neglecting this game should I not play this? 
Um, it's kind of how I feel about a lot of stuff at the moment. Um, I've, I've got it with books. I've got this backlog of books, and I picked a book to read and then realised that it wasn't the last, like the first of the backlog books that I bought. And I've been reading it going, I shouldn't be reading this book, I should be reading that other book. <sighs> first world problems, people. Um, I may have mentioned... Then I went to the cinema. Ho, ho, ho. Um, I did go to the cinema. And at the cinema. Um, although it's been out for a while. Um, we managed to go to the one showing that day. And we managed to get it cheap. To go and see uh, Wonka. Now then. One of those things where... I'm like, oh, what films are available during the kids' holidays? Uh, Kung Fu Panda 4. Okay, well, that's good, because nobody's seen the other three. Godzilla X-Kong. Not for everybody, I don't think. And that was it. And then uh, one of my daughter's friends was like, why don't we go and see Wonka? I was like... Yes, absolutely, let's go and see Wonka. Had a look, got it booked, job done. Tickets were cheap, winner, winner, chicken dinner. So that was that, we off we went to see Wonka. Personally, kind of forgot. Essentially, it's a musical. It's a prequel. Uh, Timothy Chalamet as Willy Wonka. Um, the thing that everybody was aware of was that uh, Hugh Grant was playing an Oompa Loompa, which I found interesting, especially in this day and age when um, yeah I, I, uh, um, but if you've seen the trailer and you've seen stuff it looked, it looked amusing um, and it was you know a prequel, don't need to know the, you know, you don't need to know Charlie and Chocolate Factory or any of that sort of stuff to go and see it. It was the perfect combination. Um, it wasn't until the opening credits that I saw some names that I recognised. Um, one of the more interesting uh, being like Matt Lucas, um, Olivia Coleman. Um, <coughs> So, like, quite a quite a heavy sort of British presence in it. Um, so, I told anybody who would listen, I'll tell you this much, I cannot wait for my two-hour sleep in the cinema. The morning of my second day of getting up at quarter to six. I was excited. I bought a hot coffee for before and a cold coffee for after so I could drink a hot coffee, have a lovely nappy nap and then wake at the end of the film to drink a cold coffee. And all of my plans went out the window when I watched every single minute of the film Wonka because honestly it was an absolute delight. It, honestly, it was the perfect film for the situation. The younger ones loved it. It's got the singing, it's got the dancing, it's got all of that sort of stuff. It's got a bit of magic, it's got chocolate, as you'd expect. The older ones enjoyed the singing, the dancing, the chocolate. I enjoyed the jokes. Uh, and the singing and the dancing. Um, honestly, it was it was perfection for the thing I needed it to be. It was everything. It was funny. Um, it was. This I'm trying. I've been trying to sort of pinpoint a word like like marvelous or magical or it, that kind of. Obviously, it had you know it had magic in it and stuff. And obviously it had, like, 
Mike Say, the singing and the dancing. Oh, uh, Rich, Rich Vulture was in it, um, which was, you know, funny. Um, but yes, it was basically a perfect situation. The perfect movie for the perfect situation in which I managed to take five children to the cinema and those five children all thoroughly enjoyed that film and came out and I was like, did you enjoy the film? Yeah, it was great, it was amazing. Blah, blah. And I was like, do you know something? I thoroughly enjoyed that film to the point where I was like, I think when we get home we should buy it because you can buy it now to watch at home, like digitally and stuff. I was like, we should buy it and we should all watch it as a family, like with like the younger ones and land and stuff. I was prepared to do that. They said, yeah, let's do it. We didn't in the end, but um He was very good in the role. Um I think he'd hit a real sweet spot of not p- trying to be Gene Wilder whilst be portraying a person who was going to become Gene Wilder. It had just the right amount of stuff from the original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And it was just it was it was just very well done. Ticked every box you could possibly want. Pulled at the heartstrings. Just Yeah. Pretty much perfect. So, computer games. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I've been playing the Crew Motorfest, a trial, five hour trial. Um, what I will say is this very early on in the trial, I was like, this is a game for me. Uh, oh, pardon me. Um, and I was like, I'm going to look into getting it. Um, paid £29 for the special edition. This was the game that, when I went back to look at it again, it was £40. Um, however, I had about three and a half hours left on the trial. So I just kept playing the trial because I'd seen a thing that said the the trial transfers to the game if you end up buying the game. Um, so in the last week, the trial ended and I just switched over to playing the um playing the game that I bought the disc um it's hard to not say the crew motorfest and forza horizon in the same sentence um they are ultimately pretty much the same game forza has obviously got forza um everything behind it i would say money and maybe talent behind it uh the crew i believe is ubisoft so it's not not like the shorter bob or two but as the saying goes i know there's no accounting for talent um so i'm a big horizon fan i played all the horizon games i love them um so why wouldn't I like the Crew Motorfest, especially if it's pretty much the same? And that is basically it. I am enjoying it the way I would enjoy Horizon. Um, with the added bonus that if you've got 10 kilometres to drive, why not fly there? Um, that option was wildly underused in the second crew game to the point that that game for me in a lot of ways felt unplayable whereas this time they've really utilized it as just a it's just another way to get around like i say why drive when you can fly um i don't use the boat if i don't have to use the boat um but hey um Something I need to look more into is whether there is an option to physically buy cars, because the way I've been playing it, doing these like playlist things, they keep giving you vehicles when you finish them. 
So you do like five or six races, and then they're like, hey, here's an award. Have this car that you drove at some point in it. Um, one of the things being is that the moment I won a Porsche, I was like, yep, that's the car I'm going to drive for the rest of the game. So every now and then I force myself to change uh, my vehicle. Um, obviously, like I was talking about earlier, did have that issue where the internet kicked me out and the game was like, you can't play anymore. So just, just super weird. Very, very weird. It's enjoyable. Um, I can't say I can really tell you of a downside to it. Um, which brings me on to playing Diablo 4. Again, another game where I struggled with the internet issue. But outside of that, I've been playing it and enjoying it. There was There was a night where I had internet, but the game wouldn't let me in. And wouldn't tell me why. Uh, I checked it the next morning just to make sure that I didn't need to like Google something or contact somebody. But it let me pretty much straight in. Uh, when I got kicked out of uh, Diablo um, because of an internet issue. I was really worried because I'd seen on the main screen it told me that I was level 28. But when I'd been playing the game I was level 31. And I panicked thinking it was going to send me back. Uh Another one of those where, when I loaded it, it was all fine and dandy. Um, it's fine. It's good. I enjoy it. I'm into it. What I will say is, <clears throat> um, like I say, my level is well and truly into the 30s. <clears throat> it has started to get a little samey. Go to the place, go into the dungeon, talk to the guy, do the walk around thing, kill all the monsters. Killing the monsters is basically you've got your favourite button, then you've got your second favourite button, then you've got your third favourite button. You run out of magic, mana, whatever, and then you cycle round again. This is my favourite button, this is the one that doesn't need as much magic as the others, etc. Um... Ultimately, every dungeon leads you to a boss, and each of the bosses are very similar to the last. Um, I imagine if I was playing on a harder difficulty, it would rely a lot more on, I need to do this, and I need to do that, and I need to do the other. Ultimately, the way I play it is, hit this button until big thing dies. Um, so I do accept that it isn't potentially me. I've also reached a point with, a, you know, Upgrades are few and far between now because of the level. And when I get one, I'm very much like, I don't know what to put my upgrade on to because the upgrades get a bit... If this is doing this and the sun is rising in the east and it's ten past four and a Wednesday, then you could get 2% more from doing this. Um... Honestly, I'd really like some kind of healing ability for my character. I don't know if it's just my character doesn't have that option. Um, so I have to rely on the five healing vials you're allowed at any one time. Um, most of the time, it's fine. But every now and then I have been caught short, shall we say. Um, finally... What I was alluding to earlier was uh, I made the decision to take a night off from the crew in Diablo and put a new game on. The new game I put on was Avatar. I believe it's Frontiers of Pandora. I should probably double check that. Um, I will do that now so I'm not telling you porcupines. Pandora. For... Interesting. Uh, okay, they just call it... No, yeah. It is called Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Interesting to see that it doesn't have the best reviews on that page. That's interesting. Um, so... 
I saw a review that gave this game, I think it was a, a solid 7 out of 10, let's say. I will snatch your hand off for a 7 out of 10 all day, every day. If you give me a strong 6 out of 10, I'd probably take it as well. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora, a 7 out of 10. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Um, one of those, didn't buy it release. Didn't buy it for a long time. Bought it cheap, as is the way. Put off playing it for a few days because I didn't want to just dive into another game when I had games on the go. Um, then did that thing, like I was saying, felt guilty, felt like I wasn't giving it its dues. Decided, hey, let's do this. Oh, wow. Um, problem I've got is the review told me that it gets good after about five hours. Um, the other problem I've got is that I don't know if I'm going to make it five hours. Another one of those scenarios where every single time I go to do something, my question is, why did you pick this mechanic for this thing when there are every other possible combination of game mechanics in the world like why have you chosen this as your jump why have you chosen this for your navigation why did you give me a gun that i thought was a grapple gun that turned out just to be some kind of you can hack electric electronic devices but not very well I like a degree of hand-holding for any new game. First hour or so, tell me exactly what I should be doing and exactly where I should be going. And this is where this game falls down immediately. It doesn't tell you where to go. It gives you a vague idea. It gives you a terrible map and a hope and a prayer. And outside of that, I honestly believe that I could be wandering around till the end of time and never find where I'm supposed to be. Now, I was talking about this to Leanne earlier, and I did say, if I'm honest, what I can say is this. Each time I've had to try and find something that I'm like, I've absolutely no idea where that is, I have found it. So I don't know if the game is designed in a way that it's like, we want you to think you've got, like freedom of choice but ultimately you will always find your way here because that's like a, a game staple it doesn't feel like that but maybe it is um you can't you can't put a waypoint there's no map you can go into a map but it's very vague it's a very much oh it's over there somewhere there's a point in time where it was like, oh, you need to go and talk to your mates. They're under the facility. Okay, the facility is absolutely massive. Where would you like me to start? And the game was like, start wherever you like. like All right, cool, I'll just do that then, shall I? It's, it's very much a... There's no hand-holding. And I really, I really need hand-holding with pretty much any game. I was saying this, this evening, I was like, I've played, I think, nearly all of the Diablo games. I'm playing Diablo 4 at the moment. But in the first hour, I still want you to tell me where to go and what to do. Once I feel like I've got a handle on it, leave me to it. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora does not want to do that for you there was a point in time where i had a mission it was like go and get some health for this guy he's injured it's like okay i went i picked up the health i died in the process the game reloaded and i was like oh cool it's registered that i got the health and i can just go back okay cool i go back there are, the humans are attacking so you've got to take them on it's one of my first fights and i took them on and so far through, I got injured, and it said, oh, do you want to heal yourself? I said, sure. Took out the rest of the humans, went to the guy who was injured. He was like, oh, did you bring the health stuff? I was like, yeah, sure did. A 
so do you do you want it i looked at the quest sort of thing and it was like um bring him some health stuff you've got the health stuff take it to him i was like okay so what what do i do after a while i was like what are the chances that when i healed myself i used the healing stuff i needed for the guy I went back to the place I got the healing stuff. And died in the process of getting more. Um, I then rinsed and repeated this process for about 10 minutes. Until I eventually got the healing stuff. And I took it back to the guy. And then I had the option to give it to him. And I was like, where do I even begin with how broken the mechanics are for this part of the game i should not have been able to use the healing item if i needed it for another character there's one two as a game don't tell me i've got something that i don't have because that's a lie um is very much one of those I'm a bit like okay I know that the game gets better after about five hours am I gonna make it that far some of the upgrades it was like oh you can upgrade if you want I was like all right cool and some of the upgrades I was like I don't even understand the words that are written on the screen let alone how that upgrade applies to the game and if it's like you've got one upgrade point I'm not going to put one upgrade point onto something that I have absolutely zero idea what it does. Then it was like, oh, here's here's some other upgrades that use different points. And you've got two points. I was like, oh, that's interesting. It was 40 upgrades. The screen went on forever. I'm like, you've given me two upgrade points. There's about a thousand possible upgrade points here. How do I know I'm picking the right thing? Very strange. There was, this, there was a point early on. It was like, oh, if you eat food, then you'll heal automatically. Like, okay, cool. And it gave me two pieces of food. I was like, sweet. And very early on, it was like, eat some food. I was like, okay. Then a bit later, I got injured. And it was like, oh, if you want to continue to heal, make sure to eat some food. So I ate the remaining food. And then it continued to tell me throughout the game, hey, by the way, if you eat food, you'll automatically heal. I was like, okay. So where's the food? And about an hour later, on my, uh, on my own steam, on my own accord, I found some food. The game didn't tell me to go and look for it. It didn't tell me how to find it. It didn't tell me where to look. I randomly found something and I went, I wonder if this is food. And I picked it. It was a fruit. And it told me, this is food. And I went, cool. And I ate it. So, so strange. It's very much one of those games that so far, and I've played it for like an hour, hour and a half, just short two hours maybe. It is a game where I am literally like every single mechanic you have put in this game so far i honestly think you could have picked any other choice and it would have been a better choice there was a point they're like here take this and i was like oh cool you've given me a grappling gun that's awesome i'll be able to like shoot up trees and shoot up the mountains and the rocks and stuff no it's not a grappling gun it's a thing for hacking electronics Oh, what use is that? Oh, well, you can follow that cable there to that box and press the trigger ever so slightly. Don't press it too much because that's too much. Okay. Yeah, now you can follow that cable to another box the same and do exactly the same. Okay. But after that, you get to go to the main box and do a... a, a a circuitry puzzle okay yeah and that's that cool sounds awesome 
On the flip side, it's set on Pandora, so there's a lot of uh, flora and fauna, and it's very pretty and very colourful. Outside of that... Yep, definitely waiting for it to get good. That, ladies and gents, is the podcast. Um, Something I have become aware of is these podcasts are getting longer and longer and longer. And either I need to cut them down by stop talking. Or maybe look at doing like two shorter podcasts. Pretty sure I've been saying this for about five years. Um, Let me know your thoughts on that one. Uh, But for now, that's that. So there we go, what do you think of that? A bumper edition. They're all bumper editions. Let me know what you think. Should I start splitting them in two? I don't know, putting half in the bin? What would make people listen more or less? Answers on a postcard or even an email. And you can send an email through our website, thecookiecast.com. We've got social media links and that dreaded email button which you can click and it does it all for you doesn't write it for you but you know um before you leave me before you leave us click the like button uh subscribe to the podcast that way you'll get updates and stuff for future episodes um share the podcast around because that's how podcasts grow and uh what have i missed leave a review five star obviously because you know five star review um let other people know what you think to the podcast um that that is it so until next time i'm going to say bye and i'll see you then thank you for listening thank Thank you for listening to cookie cast